Hello, my name is Mary Ann Lutine, and I'm the director of the Pro-Life Office for the Archdiocese of Boston. Thank you for tuning in to this Living the Gospel of Life series, where we discuss the Church's teachings on the life issues and highlight examples of Catholics in the Archdiocese of Boston working to build a culture of life. Our guide is the remarkable encyclical letter written by the late John Paul II entitled Evangelium Vitae, or The Gospel of Life. The Ten Commandments state very clearly, you shall not kill. Church teaching going back to the first century Didache condemns abortion, a practice that was very prevalent in ancient Greek and Roman times. The Second Vatican Council called abortion and infanticide unspeakable crimes. Consistently, the Church has said that procured abortion is a moral evil because it deliberately destroys an innocent human life made in the image and likeness of God. However serious or tragic the circumstances surrounding an abortion, no one can justify the deliberate killing of an innocent human being. But as John Paul II reminds us in the Gospel of Life, today, in many people's consciences, the perception of its gravity has become progressively obscured. Growing public acceptance of abortion comes in part from our culture's inability to distinguish between moral good and evil. Some feel abortion is justified if a mother's health or her family's standard of living would be jeopardized. Others acknowledge that many or even most abortions are wrong, but they're less objectionable if they're done early in pregnancy, especially before implantation. Still others argument, argue that the church's teaching is inconsistent with its teaching prohibition against killing because in certain circumstances, the church upholds the right to self-defense, just war or capital punishment, for example. The church's injunction that you shall not kill has absolute value when it refers to innocent persons, writes John Paul II. He tells us that this teaching should not cause surprise because to kill a human being in which the image of God is present is a particularly serious sin. Only God is the master of life. This call to protect innocent human life begins at the time when the ovum is fertilized until at the time of natural death. Newly conceived human life must be considered a human person because it is a human life distinct from the mother or father. But what if the life in question is not innocent? How can the church justify killing in the case of self-defense or in a so-called just war? There's a long history of church teaching in these matters based in part on the intrinsic value of life and the duty to love oneself no less than others. But this would require a much longer discussion. However, the gospel of life does specifically address one contemporary issue of the killing of non-innocent human life. That's the issue of capital punishment. The church universally, nationally, and locally has been in forefront of efforts to abolish capital punishment. The church teaches that society has a right to inflict punishment to redress the disorder caused by an offense. But just as God preferred the correction rather than the death of a sinner in the story of Cain and Abel, the church today teaches that criminal punishment should not go so far as execution unless there is no other possible way to defend human life. John Paul II writes that such a situation is very rare, if not practically non-existent in the modern world.